Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss Video. And did you know that the Mona Lisa has her own mailbox at the Louvre? She's received her fair share of love letters over the years, so the museum has a designated place for them to go. And that's the first of many facts about famous landmarks I'm going to share with you today. The hand of the desert in Chile is a 36-foot-tall left hand that rises out of desert sand. It was created by sculptor Mario Irrazabal in 1992, and he actually made a right hand about 10 years prior in Uruguay, about 1,200 miles away. Of course, another impressive South American statue is Christ the Redeemer. In the original design for the statue, Christ was holding a cross in one hand and a globe in the other. The famous Canadian landmark, the CN Tower in Toronto, has an observation level with a glass floor, and according to load tests, it's supposed to be sturdy enough to support 35 moose. Not to mention at least one drake. If you're wondering what kind of skyscraper needs an observation deck that can hold 35 moose, you've clearly never been to Canada. But speaking of towers, in 1979, businessmen from Fife, Washington tried to buy Seattle's Space Needle and move it to Fife. The problem, they offered to pay a mere one million dollars, which is less than a quarter of what it costs to build. But that sort of thing did work for Victor Lustig. Well, sort of. He managed to sell the Eiffel Tower twice in the 19th 1930s. Lustig was a con man who somehow convinced people in the scrap metal industry that the Eiffel Tower was going to be torn down and he was offering them the scraps. And that worked twice. Speaking of France, the Statue of Liberty was sculpted by a Frenchman, Auguste Bartholdi, and he originally designed it as a lighthouse for the Suez Canal in Egypt, titled Egypt, or Progress, Brings Light to Asia. But that didn't work out, so he repurposed the design. The Hagia Sophia is a unique item on our list in that it was made out of an ancient wonder of the world. The builders used columns from the Temple of Artemis in its construction. Moving on to the Taj Mahal, it's perfectly symmetrical with one exception. The Emperor Shah Jahan had the Taj Mahal built as a memorial for one of his wives. Her tomb is in the center, but when he died, his was added slightly to the west. The Tokyo Sky Tree is located in a region that used to be called Musashi, and when you take those syllables separately, they actually mean six three, and four, which is why the tower is exactly 634 meters tall. Jumping south to Australia, there used to be a net above the orchestra pit in the Sydney Opera House for a strange reason. In the 1980s, there was a performance of the opera Boris Godunov involving a live chicken. The chicken walked off stage and onto a cellist. As if it's not already hard enough to be a cellist. There are 32 boroughs in London, so the London Eye has 32 total capsules. They're numbered, but the builders opted to skip the unlucky number 13, so there's a capsule 33. Nearby is Big Ben in Elizabeth Tower. Because radio waves travel faster than sound itself, you can hear Big Ben chime on the radio before you can hear it from the base of the tower. While we're on the subject of places where it rains a lot, it literally rains 24-7 at the Victoria Falls rainforest in Zimbabwe. This is because the falls produce so much water vapor that it just continuously rains. Moving on to a somewhat less natural phenomenon, the Great Pyramid of Giza was the tallest man-made structure for over 3,800 years. Also, the pyramids are sometimes attributed to aliens. Wrongly, to be clear. Similarly, because Stonehenge in England was constructed millennia ago, there are lots of theories about what it was. For instance, some say that aliens made it as a map of the solar system, or that it's the work of the devil. Bonus Stonehenge fact, the word henge comes from Stonehenge, but the word came to mean an area with a ditch on the inside and a bank on the outside. Stonehenge is actually the exact opposite of that, so it's not technically a henge. We know significantly more about the Golden Gate Bridge than we do about Stonehenge. For instance, three babies have been born there. Bram Stoker, author of Dracula, never actually went to the famous Bran Castle in Romania. He may have seen pictures and people believe Dracula's home was based on it, but there's no confirmation of that even. There's a species of plant that grows only one place in the entire world, the Acropolis in Greece. It's pink and just 20 centimeters tall, but we don't know exactly exactly where it can be found because they don't want tourists investigating. Pope Clement XII allowed the lottery in Italy in 1731 after it had been banned, and a portion of the profits were used to finance the Trevi Fountain. Which is cool and everything, but in Las Vegas there's a casino where a portion of the profits were used to create a miniature Venice. It's just like regular Venice, slightly run down, doesn't smell that great, nobody lives there anymore. Sorry, that was a little hard on Venetians, or it would have been if people still lived in Venice. Anyway, the Arc de Triomphe in France has an eternal flame lit for those who died in 
World War I. Jackie Kennedy once visited the monument with JFK, and after he was assassinated, she was inspired by the Ark to have an eternal flame lit for him. Many people died while constructing the Great Wall of China, and they were honored in a tradition in which their families would return the body home with a rooster on the coffin. That was supposed to help the spirit accompany the body on the return down the wall. The Great Buddha statue in Japan has previously sat in two temples in that exact spot. Both were destroyed, one by a typhoon in the 14th century and one by a tsunami in the 15th but the statue has remained. In 1937, a bill was introduced in Congress to have Susan B. Anthony's head added to Mount Rushmore, but a rider was passed that locked funding for only the heads that had already been started, so the addition never went anywhere. The Lotus Temple in India was named the most visited building in the world in 2001. It's still on par with the Taj Mahal in terms of visitors, and amazingly, it was only the seventh ever Baha'i place of worship built. The Forbidden City is one of China's most famous landmarks, and up until 20 2011, we had our own version here in the United States. In Texas, a businessman opened a replica of the ancient Forbidden City at 1 20th of the original size. It cost around $14 million total to build and lasted for 15 years. So, you know, not, not quite as successful as the actual Forbidden City. People used to be able to cross the Tower Bridge in London even while it was raised. When it was constructed in the 19th century, there were stairs to the tops of each of the towers with walkways connecting the two, but people usually just waited for the bridge to come back down because they hated walking upstairs so much. The stairs were eventually closed in 1910, but speaking of stairs, there are over 100 separate flights of stairs at Machu Picchu, which is pretty incredible when you realize that most of the individual stairs staircases were created from a single stone. The Leaning Tower of Pisa once leaned in the other direction. Construction on the tower started in 1173, and it started leaning in the first place because of soft ground and a bad foundation. The construction stopped and then started again in 1272, and as more layers were added, the tilt actually shifted to the direction it now leans south. In 1972, a man ran into St. Peter's Basilica with a hammer, yelled, I am Jesus Christ, and removed large chunks chunks of the Michelangelo statue Pieta. The statue had also lost some fingers in a move during the 18th century, so that's why it now sits behind bulletproof glass. St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow, Russia is famous for its colorful appearance, but it was actually originally white. It was completed in 1561 and didn't get painted until the 17th century. And finally, I return to my salon to tell you that Howard Hughes used to own 138 acres around the Hollywood sign. They were sold in 2002, and some mansions almost went up in the region, but the Trust for Public Land bought the area, and it's now a protected park. Thanks for watching Metal Floss Video, which is made with the help of all of these nice people. Let me know in comments what the best landmark or monument you've ever been to is. For me, probably the Grand Canyon. And as we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome.